since um, there were threats and it looked ominous that uh, Germany was getting uh, strong, that Hitler's rise to power was uh, uh, going its course, uh, that um, he, uh, Leon Blum, had uh, put through in the government a, an edict that said if uh, foreigners would uh, volunteer for the French army, then uh, they could, uh, uh, they would serve a, a short time, six months, and uh, for that, in exchange, they would get uh, citizenship. When Leon Blum came up with that proposal, uh, I'm sure, though I have no direct evidence of this, but I'm sure that he was very much aware that there was a large population of Jews from Eastern Europe, uh, especially Poland, who had settled in Paris, for example, and uh, would be prepared to volunteer for the French army uh, if called upon. So that's exactly what happened. A large number of them uh, volunteered, uh, my father among them, um, in early uh, 39, so that by summer of 39, they were off to uh, boot camp and uh, preparing to uh, uh, become soldiers, uh, even though no war had yet broken out. Uh, and then uh, when the war broke out, they were immediately called into service uh, up. They all fought from the Maginot Line down, retreating uh, southward. By June of uh, 40, uh, they had, uh, of course, been defeated, and uh, the army then demobilized all of those French foreign legionnaires who had fought in the French army. My two uncles, uh, both had volunteered for the French army along with my father, so they were not in Paris at the time that uh, the German army advanced on Paris. And uh, I remember the, uh, uh, the night before the actual occupation in June of 40, um, my uh, cousins uh, and my aunts and my mother and all, we all got together in my aunt's apartment and we spent that night there, and we could hear in the distance the, uh, the gunfire, the, the uh, uh, cannons and so on. Um, and um, by morning, uh, we ran down, it was just a block away, uh, to a major boulevard where the German army uh, came uh, marching in. Well, not really marching, they were straggling in and, uh, and I remember vividly, we were on the sidewalk and uh, uh, we kids were very impressed with their um, uh, the machinery they had, their equipment. Stores were now displaying the swastika. Uh, City Hall French flag had been removed and the, the swastika had replaced it. And uh, overnight the um, uh, rationing took effect, so there was uh, there were shortages of food, uh, standing in line uh, outside of uh, shops, uh, and uh, having very very limited uh, access to what previously had been uh, uh, easy to get. Life in in Montauban was very different. Um, Montauban is a small town, uh, maybe 40,000 uh, population, and uh, it was uh, in the um, uh, southern France, uh, southwestern France, uh, where the Huguenots had settled. So this was primarily a uh, Protestant area, uh, which uh, had tremendous ramifications, as it turned out, because they were much more tolerant uh, to uh, foreigners. They were much more uh, uh, opposed to uh, the uh, government's uh, edicts. So um, you didn't have a real collaboration from the population. At least we didn't run into that. Uh, my father, as a veteran, 
was uh, very well treated by the townspeople. Uh, they showed a great deal of respect for that. Um, and uh, uh, he was a, a very good tailor, so uh, they uh, uh, would you know, frequent his establishment that is a, it was a little shop in, in the house and they would uh, uh, get some clothes made by him. Uh, the veterans uh, office uh, was uh, in City Hall and, uh, and received a, a lot of uh, support from uh, the government even though it was a, a Vichy or a right-wing government uh, so that uh, a, a lot of information was available that otherwise might not have been. For example, um, we knew a short time before the uh, roundups took place in 1942 that, um, that this was going to happen. Uh, the gendarme, the police, uh, the veterans office uh, let it be known that um, Soon, couldn't say exactly when, uh, there would be a, a roundup of Jews, for example, uh, by the French government. Uh, this was a, as we later learned, that the <coughs> this was a uh, this was a uh, uh, an agreement with Eichmann that took place uh, in 1942, in summer of 42, uh, that. Um, uh, he would uh, be supplied with uh, Jews uh, that would be deported from southern France. Um, and in fact, in August uh, 26th of, uh, or 25th of uh, 1942, um, there was a roundup at uh, six o'clock, starting at six o'clock in the morning, where um, the um, gendarme came and knocked on doors. Having been made aware of this, uh, my folks simply woke me up very gently uh, and simply told me that there are people knocking on the door but we're not going to answer, uh, so let's be very quiet and uh, then they'll go, they'll go away. And uh, they continued to pound on the door uh, for about an hour and a half, uh, taking a little break here and there and then coming back. Uh, we uh, just did not answer, and uh, being the gendarme, they did not knock the door down. Uh, we've seen a lot of uh, newsreels of uh, the Nazis knocking doors down, but these, uh, these were French uh, police, so, uh, you know, there's no response, there's no response, we'll just go on and come back later. Anyway, uh, Getting back to this incident on in, in end of August of 42, uh, a few minutes after they left, uh, my father then made a uh, visit to the veterans' uh, office in City Hall, which was uh, pretty courageous because uh, he could have been picked up, but uh, he felt pretty secure that he had friends in high places, so to speak. And the uh, commander of the veterans uh, uh, issued a, uh, a document saying that um, uh, our family should be left alone. As it turns out, after that day, uh, there were no further roundups. Uh, the uh, Jews were left alone until uh, the occupation by the Germans, which uh, was in uh, November of uh, 1942, in fact, uh, on Armistice Day, so on November 11th, is when they occupied all of France.